Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Uh, first and foremost, um, I know Brother Stephen says that we preach once a month. It's been a while since I preach, and um, I'm no, I'm nervous as it is being here once a month, not being absent for about two, three months makes me a little bit more nervous. But I'm grateful because I serve a loving God. Amen. Amen. I serve a God that has promised to be with us, not to leave us, nor forsake us. Amen. So I'm grateful because uh, I put myself in God's hands and say, God, you know what your church needs. Amen. So um, really quick, like I said, I just want to give God the honor and the glory for his mercy. And I want to take advantage, as Brother Stephen said, just uh, uh, congratulate and wish all the fathers that are here present a very blessed um uh, Father's Day, amen. Uh, as I said, God has not, like Brother Stephen said, God has not only blessed me to father four beautiful daughters, of which two of them I have here, two of them unfortunately are not here, uh, and one handsome son, amen. Uh, but God has also blessed me, has, has been faithful to his word when he says that he has more to give us than what we could ask for, amen. Wow. Uh, and, and, and that is in the form of one lovely granddaughter by the name of Daya, Isabella Jimenez, and two handsome grandsons, Ian Robert Olvera and Daniel Josiah Jimenez. Amen. I love them with all my heart, uh, and I'm grateful. And I heard one time a person say that grandchildren are God's gift for you not killing your kids as they were growing up. Amen. So, because... Uh, Kids are challenging, amen, fathers and mothers. So God blesses us in, in such a way, amen. But being Father's Day, I want to speak about fathers, amen. And with that, I'm going to ask that Brother Brian can project 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, for the honor and glory of God. And the word of God reads as follows. It says, I will be a father to you, and you should be my sons and daughters, Seek the Lord Almighty. I'm going to ask our youth pastor to pray for us. Amen. Lord God, we come before you, and we want to honor you today, Lord, with our hearts and our minds, and with the worship, my God, the praise that proceeds, my God, from our lips and from our heart today. We want to thank you for this word that you prepared in your servant's heart. We want to thank you for making this uh, time available, making this service come together. We know that you've got something wonderful for us, and we ask that we would continue to worship you and praise you throughout this day, throughout this week, and that this word, Lord, would really be, Lord, ingrained and become rooted to our hearts, and that it should, Lord, carry us, Lord, into new blessings and into new understanding of your word. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. You can have your seats. Uh, quick fun fact about Father's Day. Um, Father's Day was actually suggested by a young lady named by the name of Sonora Dodd back in 1909 in Washington during a Mother's Day sermon at her church. And the reason that uh, this young lady uh, was compelled was because at a very young age, her mother passed away, forcing her dad to be a single father to six young people. I don't know the sexes of it. So being his, her dad's birthday being in June, she suggested that we celebrate fathers in June. And it wasn't until World War II that her suggestion started getting a little bit of traction, but it wasn't until President Johnson, Lyndon Johnson back in 66, declared that the third Sunday of every June would be Father's Day. But even yet, it wasn't until six years later, back in 72, when President Richard Nixon actually made it a federal holiday, just like Juneteenth now. Amen? So uh, that's just a small little fun fact about Father's Day, how it came to be. Well, as you know, every time that I have the privilege to stand before God's chosen people, uh, besides being nervous, I feel privileged. Amen? And I always try to be transparent with you guys so that you guys can understand that God is an awesome God, amen? amen. And the transparency is that, as much of you already know, I grew up in a non-Christian home, amen? 
to parents that did not know God. As Brother Stephen was saying earlier, you guys are privileged. Amen. And even though you may not have perfect parents, you have parents that love you. And by showing you the God's word demonstrates how much they love you. Amen. So as parents that did not know God or did not fear God, uh, I grew up in a household where there was constant uh, domestic violence. So growing up in my early age, I knew that I did not have perfect parents. Amen. As most of you guys are, have already figured out that your parents are not perfect. Amen. But yet, as we're growing up, we have this idea, there's a, there's a portion in our lives where our parents have superhero attributes. Amen. In our minds, it's like nothing can stop dad. Dad can do everything. Dad knows everything. Amen. It isn't until we start growing into our teenage years that we start recognizing that, oh, you know what? Dad doesn't know everything. You know? There's things that dad cannot do. Dad gets tired. Amen? Oh, I, I might want to go to the beach or to the park, and dad's tired from work. It's like, I thought dad would never get tired. Amen? But unfortunately, it's not until we grow out of our teenage years that we recognize that father gains or has some kind of knowledge. Amen? Which leads me to believe to a term or a saying that Mark Twain once said. He said, when I was a boy of 14, my, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned in seven years. <laughs> Amen? So it's not that he, uh, that he obtained so much, it's just that we, everybody is growing, amen? And as we're growing, we're learning. And as we're learning, we're, we're teaching, hopefully, with God's wisdom, amen? amen? So I said earlier that I wanted to talk about fathers, but actually what I want to talk about is, as Brother Stephen relayed, our heavenly father, amen. amen? I want to talk about our perfect father, amen? That image that we had in our terrestrial father is actually completed if we get to know our Heavenly Father in a very intimate, personal way, church. Amen? That knowledge that you thought your dad knew, your Heavenly Father knows. Amen? That power that you expect your Father to always obtain and have, it is found in your Heavenly Father, church. Amen? But we have to understand who our God really is, who our Father is, or who wants to be our eternal Father. God is infinite, church. Amen. Unlike us, God has no boundaries. Amen? He has no, uh, 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 he has no limitations. He's not defined by the rules of gravity or anything else. Amen? Amen. God is self-existent, church. Unlike everything else in the entire universe, he had no beginning because like the creator, he is the only one that exists outside of the created order. Amen? If you talk to Dr. Maffei or our co-pastor, he'll tell you how an embryo is formed in the mother's womb and how it grows and it develops. Why? Because God developed everything to be in an order. God ordained everything to be exactly in, in its place. The only thing that is not in place is God. Why? Right? Because he is above everything, church. I mean, he is not so consistent. He does not rely on us. He does not depend on us. He is all powerful, church. Amen. That is who our Father, Heavenly Father is. Amen. God is eternal. Like I said, he is not bound by dimensions of time. He created time as a temporary context for his creation with God. Everything that he has happened or will happen has already occurred within his awareness. God encompasses all eternity. God is self-sufficient. All creation relies on God for existence, but he has no need for anything. He does not need our help. He only offers us the privilege of being involved with him in the fulfillment of his purposes. Amen? As I say, God is all-powerful. Jeremiah summed her up and saying, O sovereign Lord, 
You have made the heavens and the earth by your great power. Nothing is too hard for you. The astronomers of this time have come to the decision or made the conclusion that the that this world has about a hundred billion galaxies. Amen? A hundred billion galaxies. And yet David said, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is the man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you shall visit? You have put us a little bit old, a little bit less than the angels and you have put us to, the, to be above all things. Amen? God, that the astronomers, and a lot of those astronomers are atheists, they have understood that there are billions and billions of galaxies, and yet the Word of God says that our Heavenly Father is the creator of all those. Amen. But yet He has put us above all those. That's the reason why we've been able to go to, go to the moon, we've been able to explore Mars, uh, I believe uh, Jeff Bezos is thinking of going to the moon sometime on his own personal spaceship or whatever, but the matter of the fact, the fact of the matter is that the God that created these billions of galaxies is our Heavenly Father Church. Amen? And there's nothing that God cannot do. Amen? God is ever present. Psalm says, where I can, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the desk, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I sit on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you and the night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. What this is telling this church is that since God is everywhere, He's wherever you are at. It doesn't matter what kind of circumstance you're facing. You are not alone. Amen. You have a Heavenly Father that loves you with all of His heart, with all of His strength, with all of His might. I've said time after time, as much Christian that I try to be, if I ever see my children in physical danger, I'm going to interfere. I'm going to intercede. Amen? Even if they criticize me, that's not Christian-like or whatever it may be. And, and, and I might be wrong by saying that, but I want to say that because I want to present to you that your Heavenly Father that is with you at all times will intercede regardless of what you're going through. All you have to do is just raise your hand and say, Lord, I cannot handle this trial. I cannot handle this tribulation. I cannot handle this situation. I need your strength. I need your power. I need you to help me. And he will help you. Turn why? Because he has said, cry out to me, and I shall hear thy cry. Amen? God has promised. It's not like God is, is handling these poor children in India and is an unattentive of our needs. No. God is all present, church. Amen? Maybe our fathers aren't always there when we need them. And as Brother Stephen was saying, maybe some of us are growing up in a one-parent household. You know? But regardless of what that is, you have a heavenly father that you can depend on, that you can rely on. And on top of that, he has all the resources at his hand, church. All you have to do is ask, and it should be given unto you. God is knows everything, church. Jeremiah said, I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and to give you a hope. Amen? God knows our future. Don't worry about your future. I'm not saying be lazy. I'm not saying take a break from your studies. I'm not saying to put the go the extra mile. I'm saying do not worry. Why? Because God has plans that are good and not disaster for you. Amen? He already has your future. All you have to do is just Seek Him. Ask God for guidance. God, I don't know what you want me to be. How can I serve you in this life? If you have, there's two careers that you're undecisive, present them to God. 
Maybe God has a third career that you didn't know about that he wants you to take. Amen? Why? Because God knows everything. God is holy, church. So obey God because you are his children, Peter said. Don't slip back into your old ways of doing evil. You didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do. For he himself said, you must be holy because I am holy. It doesn't say be perfect. God understands that his children is not perfect. If God was looking for perfect children, these pews would be empty. I definitely would not be here. Amen? But he understands that we are not perfect. But yet he loved us in such a manner that he says, Son, I still want to be your father. I want to love you. I want to caress you. Maybe you receive all the love from your parents, but if you didn't, I want to offer you that love. I want to offer you that, 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 that you are not alone. I want to offer you not only a better life in this place, but even after this place. Remember what Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. God has more to give us, church. We just have to understand who our Heavenly Father is. God is love, church. The Word of God says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Should tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors to Him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other created thing should be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is basically summarizing church that if we know our Heavenly Father and we love Him and allow Him to love us, what can separate us? It gave a lot of categories that was unable to separate. It only did not give one category in here that could separate us, in my opinion, from the love of God, and that is us. That is our decision. It is our way of living our life. We are the only individual that can separate us from God in the sense of saying, you know what, I'm going to go do what I want. I'm not going to ask God for advice. And even yet I receive God's direction, I decide not to go that route. That is the only thing that can separate us from Christ. It are sounds. We're our own danger, church. Yeah. But if you subject yourself to God on a daily basis, if you wake up in the morning, it doesn't have to. You don't have, I, I know a pastor loves when his uh, uh, congregation comes to church and prays, but, and I'm not saying that you should not come to church and pray because then I'll get in trouble with our bishop. But what I'm saying is, when you wake up in the morning, say a quick prayer. Say, Lord, I have a test. I have to go to work. I don't want to go to work. Whatever the situation is, I still have the situation that wasn't resolved from yesterday or from last week. Give me the wisdom. Give me the ability to be able to honor you whatever happens. And guess what? God will answer you, church. You are not alone, church. God has not called you to abandon you in the desert, church. God has called you to be with you, to prosper you, to bless you, to uplift you, to honor you, and to glorify you, church. But we first have to honor and glorify Christ. By seeking his presence on a daily basis. Amen? It doesn't have, if, if you could be for an hour, praise God. But just give yourself to God every morning and say, God, walk with me. Guide my step. Let your word be the line onto my foot so that I can step according to your will. And God will do it, church. God is merciful, church. Have mercy on me, O oh God, because of your unfailing love, the psalm said. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore me again to the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Church, the reason we are here, the reason that I am here is because God is a merciful God. Amen. Amen. This reminds me of the prodigal son. We all know the story of the prodigal son, church. And we know that this, this, this individual decided to uh, live according to the world. He spent his mud dad's half of the heritage. But when he got to the lowest parts of his, of his, of his life, uh, he understood that there was a terrestrial dad that loved him. And in this side, he decided, you know what? I'm going to go back home. You guys know the story. I don't have to relate the story. Well, the fact of him deciding to go home and being received by his, 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 his terrestrial father is a significance that God is willing to lift us up regardless of what we have done, church. I am a, I am a testimony of that, church. Amen. I am a witness that God will forgive the darkest sins, church. Amen. God is a merciful God. God is a faithful God. He is a God that is faithful to his promises. Uh, Paul said to the church of Corinthians, I will trust him to always keep his promises. Remember that the temptations that come into your life are not different from what others experience. And God is faithful and just to not allow you to fall into temptation. God will give you the exit, church. If you're struggling, if you're having a difficulty, if you're, if, if, if you're questioning your faith, ask God, help me, Lord. And God is faithful because he is faithful. I'm, I'm going to go really fast here. Um, <clears throat> as I was preparing this message, church, I was able to realize that we are living in a very privileged era. Amen? In the era of grace, church. Did you know that even though in the Old Testament, the believers in God, in Jehovah God, God Almighty, uh, even though they knew Him, they did not have that, that privilege to call Him Father? If you read the Old Testament, as most of you probably have, you'll find out that the the believers, the, the Jewish people, uh, the Israelites, never directed themselves to God as Father in a personal, intimate way, as we have the privilege of doing. They would refer to him as Master. They would refer to him as Ruler, as Adonai, Lord, or El Shaddai, which means Almighty. Some of them would even say Hachem, which means the name. They would not even, they, they would not even, uh, they would just say the name. Amen. When Moses was sent to the people of Israel, to God's people, and, they, and, and, and he was talking to God and God, and he asked God, God, if the sons of Israel asked me, who sent me, who should I say sent me? He didn't say, say, say your father sent you. He said, say, say I am sent me. The people in the Old Testament did not have the privileged church that we have this day and to be able to know our creator in an intimate way, in a way that, that we can call him Father, we can call him Abba, we can call him our, our, our Heavenly Father. We have that, 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 that privileged church to be able to say, Lord, thank you for being my Father. Amen? Yes. Now, God was the Jewish people's deliverer and, and he gave them the promised land, but he didn't have, he didn't, they didn't have that relationship. Amen? You guys see a sergeant on, 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 on the street and, and, and you direct to him as sergeant or officer or lieutenant or captain. Amen? But when that captain, that sergeant, that lieutenant goes home and he has children, those children are able to get close to that lieutenant, to that captain and say, Father, how was your day? Dad, I'm glad that you're okay. Father, I'm happy to see you that you were able to come home. They have that relationship with him. They not only know him as captain and lieutenant, they know him as their, as their father. You have that privilege, church. You have that privilege to be able to say, Father, you are my heavenly father. You are my perfect father. You are my all-knowing father. You are my mighty father. 
Father, you are my all loving Father. Amen. John said, he came to his own and his home did not receive him. But as many received him, to them who gave, to them he gave the right, and I say not only the right, but I say the privilege to become children of God. Amen? God has come to make us his children, church. And as his children, we will have our perfect father. After service today, most of you will probably will celebrate Father's Day. Some of you already picked out a card that says to the dad, to the world's best dad. I don't know what I'm going to do with so many cards, but you know, okay. <laughs> so each and every one of you guys, you're going to give it to your respect of father because in your eyes, that is your perfect father. And as I said earlier, as Brother Stephen said, as you guys realize, there is no perfect father except our heavenly father. Yes. There is no other mighty father than our heavenly father church. There is no other father that not only understands us, but accepts us the way that we are. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he wants to have a relationship with us, not only on Sundays, not only on Zoom Tuesdays, or I'm not sure if we're going to go back to Tuesday services, but not only two days of the week or three days of the week, but every single day that he gives us life. He wants to be our Heavenly Father. He's crying to be our Heavenly Father. He sees what turmoil we're in. He sees what trouble we're in. He sees that we need his assistance. And he says, son, I am here. Why don't you cry out to me? I love you. I died for you. I love you with all my heart. And I will do everything in my power, which is everything to give you eternal life. Amen? Sometimes we want our parents to give us something and because of financial restrictions, they are unable to. But God has no limits, church. God has no limits. What does that mean? I'm going to experience a new iPhone every year? No. God's not going to bless you that way. God has heavenly blessings for you. God has the true blessings that we are not only don't know about, but that we really need in our life, church. But that's only going to happen if we know our Father. Amen? I can't go to a perfect stranger that's, that I know that's a Father and ask him for things because he can say, who are you? I don't know you. Amen? I can go to my own Father if I still had him. You know? But we can always go to our Heavenly Father, church. Amen. We can always go to our Heavenly Father. And, and, and to conclude, John continues saying, to become children of God, to those who believe in His name, and verse 30 says, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. Yeah. It is God's will, church, for you, for me, to become children of of the Almighty. Yes. But you know what? There's a responsibility that comes with that. And that responsibility is that we need to honor God. We need to seek God. Yes. We need to serve God. We need to call upon God. We need to invite God into our lives. And we have to say, God, I want to be your child. I want to be your child. I want to be your son. I want to be your daughter. I want to love you. I want to honor you. I want to glorify you. I want to exalt you. I want to praise you. I want to love you as you have loved me.